Hello, Holy Trinity. It is Tuesday, September 26th. It's the 25th week of Ordinary Time. And here in D.C., it is getting cool and rainy as we head into the fall season. It's my favorite season. And it is also a season of celebrating Mary. Just in this month alone, we celebrated Mary's birth. We celebrated Our Lady of Sorrows. We celebrated the Holy Name of Mary. And um, next month, October, we celebrate Our Lady of the Rosary and we sort of dedicate time to the rosary. It's a good warm-up for December um, when, with the Advent season, Mary figures prominently, literally, as well as figuratively, beginning with the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe in early December. But it is always a good time to honor Mary and to seek a deeper understanding of her and how she can help us as Christians today. In fact, every day at Don Bosco Cristo Rey, where I teach theology, we seek the intercession of Mary, Mary Help of Christians, to whom St. John Bosco had a special devotion. So in today's gospel, Mary appears, though we get only a fuzzy image of her, because she seems to be struggling along with Jesus' brothers to get through a crowd to reach Jesus. So here's our gospel reading for today in its entirety from Luke 8, 19 to 21. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. And he said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Jesus is saying something so incredible here. You are mine if you hear the word of God and act on it. He has an amazing mother, a model of strength and courage and holiness, who had a very special relationship to Jesus. And he's saying that any of us can have that kind of relationship to him. On a purely human level, that is radical. In light of the importance in the Jewish tradition of tribe and family lineage, and on a divine level, it's an amazing thing to say. You are part of the family of God, as intimate and close to God as the woman who carried Jesus and brought him into the world. As intimate and close to God as Jesus himself. So we look to Mary as a woman who had a total dedication to God. Now, sometimes this passage gives uh, we Catholics a double take because we have a dogma stating the perpetual virginity of Mary. This is a dogma that underscores her total dedication to God. Um, And admittedly, this is a generous interpretation of the reason for the teaching. But reading the passage at face value can cause a little problem since it refers to Jesus' brothers. So the word that's used here for brothers is the Greek word Adolphus. Its roots are from, ah, and womb. Delphos, as in from the same womb. Brothers like Andrew and Peter, like James and John, that's the same term that's used. The Catechism of the Catholic Church explains that the church has always understood the word's meaning in this context as um, cousins or other relative, like how John the Baptist was related. Though the word used to describe the relationship of John's mother is Elizabeth to Mary as sungenats, sungenes, or kinsmen, um, is a different word. And so every translation of the Bible that I could find translates uh, Adelphos, Adelphos as brothers in this particular passage. But it is still possible that the original meaning was countrymen or kinsmen, as the catechism claims, so as to preserve this image of Mary as giving her whole being to God. So the feminist biblical scholar Julie Fetter of St. Mary's College in Notre Dame notes that in ancient and medieval times, indeed until last century really, A consecrated woman's decision to remain, quote, ever virgin or a perpetual virgin in many ways did free her to dedicate her whole self to God. 
This decision allowed for a woman to maintain an integrity rooted in her, quote, true connectedness to her own self and to God because she was not considered the property of another person, her husband. And so Dr. Fetter has an interesting take on the term perpetual virgin as being understood positively as the presence of an embodied expression of holiness of mind and spiritual freedom more than the absence of sexual activity. So she posits it has more to do with successfully resisting oppression than it does with avoiding fully consensual, life-giving sexual activity. And I don't know if that redeems the idea of ever virgin for me, but I do know that it seems to capture something of Mary's spirit that Jesus says we can all have if we do hear the word of God and if we do it, if we act on it. We might then become spiritually free to see others the way Jesus sees us as his own family that he loves so dearly. What a gift. At Don Bosco Cristo Rey, it's one of the pillars of our school community that we are family. And so may it be so. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. <music>